Hey, hello everyone. On December 3rd at around 11 p.m., President Yoon Suk Yeol declared martial law, and three hours later, lawmakers voted 190 to 0 to lift it. Today, we delve into a pivotal event in South Korean history, the Gwangju Uprising of May 1980. This nine-day movement not only symbolizes the resilience of democratic aspirations but also serves as a stark reminder of the cost of freedom. The Gwangju Uprising was a turning point in South Korea's struggle against authoritarianism, marked by both tragedy and inspiration. To understand the Gwangju Uprising, we must first explore its context. South Korea in the late 1970s was under an authoritarian regime. President Park Chung-hee's assassination in 1979 created a power vacuum, leading to a coup by Chun Doo-hwan, who tightened martial law. This extended suppression of civil liberties, including the closure of universities and media censorship, sparked nationwide dissent. Gwangju, a city in South Jela province, became the epicenter of resistance. The people's frustration was fueled by years of regional neglect and political repression, making them particularly defiant against Chun's regime. On May 18, 1980, students gathered in Gwangju to protest martial law. The military responded with brutal force, using batons and tear gas. What began as a peaceful demonstration escalated as citizens joined the students, protesting not just the immediate violence but also years of systemic oppression. The tipping point came when government troops opened fire on unarmed civilians. Outraged, the citizens organized themselves, seizing weapons and occupying government buildings. For a brief moment, Gwangju became a self-governed city, embodying the spirit of democracy. However, the government retaliated with overwhelming force. On May 27, paratroopers stormed the city, crushing the uprising. Official records state around 200 deaths, but many believe the true toll to be in the thousands. The immediate aftermath was grim. The government painted the uprising as a communist rebellion to justify its actions, and survivors faced stigmatization and imprisonment. Yet, the truth about Gwangju could not be suppressed forever. The uprising became a symbol of resistance, galvanizing future movements. By 1987, mass protests forced the government to hold democratic elections, paving the way for South Korea's democratic transition. Today, Gwangju is honored as the birthplace of South Korea's democracy. The May 18th National Cemetery stands as a solemn tribute to the sacrifices made. The Gwangju uprising was not just a battle for a city, it was a fight for the soul of a nation. Its legacy endures in South Korea's vibrant democracy and commitment to human rights. As we reflect on this event, let it remind us that the path to freedom is often fraught with sacrifice, but the rewards, justice, equality, and liberty, are invaluable. So what do you all think about this? That's all for today, goodbye. Thank you for watching the video. Bye bye.